So we're here today with uh, Graham Davy of um, the wonderful Grey for Now Games, and we're talking about Test of Honor Second Edition. So, Graham, hello. Hi. Um, please tell us more about what is different about uh, Test of Honor Two. Okay. Well, um, first off, I think it's important to say that the the core game hasn't changed because everyone really liked the core the core game, um, and it, it went really well, better than we expected. Um, so we've not messed around with that. Um, that said, there's lots of little tweaks and balances and polishes to um, to improve things because we've had a huge amount of playtesting and feedback over the over the two years since it came out. Um, but then, of course, there are some chunky, fun new bits that we've added on as well. Uh, so um, probably the the most exciting thing is that we've the, the version one game had dishonor cards where you could do something sneaky and nasty uh, to help your attack um, and you got a plus one to your roll uh, but then you had to take a dishonor card which would uh, give a penalty to the rest of your force probably later in the game for one of their their morale checks to test of nerve. So what we've added in now is the, the other side to that. We've now got honor cards. Okay. So now you can you have a, a choice. You've got the path of dishonor or the path of honor. Um, the way you get these cards has changed as well. Um, so previously you could just choose to do something nasty anytime you wanted, anytime you're attacking. Um, now how it works is uh, when you're attacking someone who can't defend themselves, who's run, of run out of actions, uh, that's the point that you make the decision. So they're clearly occupied attacking somebody else. They've been busy fighting. Uh, so you have the decision to sneak up and try and hit them in the back of the head, thereby taking dishonor card. Um, or do you nobly announce yourself, so defend yourself, get ready. Um, at that point, you give away a minus one on your attack, but you'll get one of the honor cards. Now the honor cards really help to build up the power of your force. So they'll be giving you things like extra actions, they'll be inspiring your troops to give them bonuses. Um, so it's a, quite a different way of playing rather than pouring everything into your hero uh, and making him really amazing, but forgetting about those lowly insignificant troops around you. The honor cards allow you to kind of be more of a commander um, and build up your force and, and rely more on your followers. Okay, good, that's interesting. Uh, so we're covering the same period of, of samurai history. That's uh, right, yeah. Uh, so are there any new units that you've brought in or new characters that you've brought in to, make, to enhance that aspect? Well, the uh, first new set that we've done um, are called the unlikely allies um, so this is a set of eight characters um, they're all completely different uh, the idea is that they're all um, uh, the clientele of a particular tea house um, some isolated far-flung mountain pass or somewhere um, which has suddenly come under attack and they've been forced to work together to defend the place so we have the hostess who, who run, runs the tea house. Um, there's a priest, there's a high ranking samurai, there's a nasty ronin marksman, there's a blacksmith, there's a wise old man. Uh, and they're all very different characters that uh, have come together to, to fight. Um, so the thing with this set is you can play them together as a, a force on their own. Uh, and they work very well like that. But they're also, uh, we very much had in mind that they could all be, go off and ally with other, the existing sets. So obviously the, the priest works well with the Sohai monks. Um, the Ronin will go with the existing Ronin, uh, etc. And they've all got abilities that um, buff the other troops around them. Uh, so that works very well. Um, there's the blacksmith makes your weapons a little better across the force, for example. Uh, the Ronin boosts other people shooting. Um, 
the, the hostess herself um, inspires inspires her loyal clientele to, to fight a little bit harder if she's been injured. Um, so there's lots of rules like that which work very well when you're allying them out individually. So it sounds like it's very much still a, a very much a narrative, almost role-playing game to a certain extent. Um, but I think it's also a resource management game, is that fair enough to say? You've got to manage the characters and the options that you have to achieve certain objectives. Uh, yes, in a way. Um, certainly, I always I was always inspired by samurai movies rather than just pure historical fact. Um, so, so you're, you're Akira Kurosawa's ex Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, um, I think there's there's often an assumption in if if you're in uh, historical war games that a that a box set should be a military unit, mm. uh, and we've tried to at least now move away from that. So it's more of a, a characterful set, almost a scene from a movie, um, and so so there you definitely you see that kind of almost role-playing element you, you can imagine these mm. this new set as a, a role-playing party mm. um, so it's a cin more of a cinematic game than a war yes game absolutely right. um, so it's a historical setting but um, but you've got those kind of that cinematic license going on where the heroes can do amazing things and uh, slay loads of Kind of low, lowly extras, if you like, um, without without worrying. Okay, so um, a, the first edition was packaged with lots and lots of plastics, and I know that was the aim of that particular company at that time. Yeah. With your game, will it be packaged with figures, or are they are we using? I think you said it earlier. Are we using what people have already have? Yeah. So I was very aware that people have obviously invested in the first issue edition, and it's not been that long since all of that came out. Uh, so I wanted to make sure people had options to upgrade to the second edition without ha forcing them to, to buy loads of new models if they didn't want to. Um, so the gaming set uh, comes with really just what you need to play. Uh, it's not full of miniatures. Um, so you get your rule book, your counters, your dice and your cards. Uh, we have put one very nice miniature in there, yeah. um, but that's kind of a, a promo bonus mm -hmm. miniature, mm -hmm. um, uh, rather than a, so it's not a starter set as such. Okay, and uh, distribution wise, you've now gone with um, Nick at Northstar. That's right, yeah. Um, one good thing about that, of course, is he's got the uh, old Ronin range from uh, Osprey true, yeah. Games. So on top of that, you can access those sort of characters. Have you, come up with um, crossover cards to make some figures that you might have bought for somewhere else, for example, mm. suitable for the game? Or is it, you know, are they generic or are they particular people or whatever? Well, um, obviously a lot of people have the initial sets. There were 10 expansion sets mm -hmm. that came out mm -hmm. over, the, over the period of first edition. Um, so, but we were always quite free and easy about saying, use, if you like this other range of figures, then use yeah. them, that's great. Yeah. Um, so what we've done is updated all the cards from those 10 expansion packs. Um, so they all work for second edition. Um, so you've got those 10 factions, the ninjas, the monks, the ronin. Um, but at this point, you can use whatever figures you want. Um, if you've got the old ones from Warlord, that's great. Um, if you want to pick another range and start start building them up, that that's fine too. Okay. Now let's let's uh, move past the game and talk about you as as an entity, um, <laughs> not that you're some sort of ghost or anything like that, or from creature from beyond. Um, Grey for now games. So yep. w tell us all about that. So your first big task has been reinventing Test of Honor for, for a, a right. new generation almost, to a yes. certain extent. What about, what, what's, what else have you up to? What is Grey for Now Games? <clears throat> well, um, it, it, the company is essentially me. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'll uh, have a lot of help from the guys at Footsore and other chaps. Um, uh, 
it was set up to publish Test of Honor 2. Um, but so, yes, certainly I have other things bubbling away in my head okay. for, for future product, projects. Um, uh, different um, potentially war games, potentially board games. So I'm a big board gamer as well. Um, uh, potentially a Kickstarter or two. Um, so yes, definitely other other things okay. on Good. the horizon. And uh, so, can we expect more miniatures, more cards, mm. uh, package deals, etc., yeah. going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the the next set of models has already been sculpted, mm -hmm. um, just just in final touches now. Um, as I said, I'm trying to take this slightly more cinematic approach to to what the sets will be. Which is good, um, I think. Uh, we're also doing lots of kind of free downloadable cards. Just to, right. you can never quite fit as many things as you want to in the printed sets. Um, so I think it's a nice thing to be able to uh, put extra cards online, particularly recruitment cards. So the more unusual weapons, for example, that that don't get seen much but a few people may have converted them or bought a different range so um, we'll, every set we do will bring out extra stuff online which people can download for, to get a bit of a bonus. Okay right well thank you very much Graham. This video has been produced by WI Prime. WI Prime is Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. As a WI Prime member, you get access to all Wargames Illustrated videos before anyone else. We'll keep you posted on what's new via the Primetime News Bulletin delivered to your inbox every Friday. If you are not a WI Prime member, you're missing out on loads of benefits, including access to the Wargames Illustrated Vault, freebies, discount vouchers, PDFs of the latest magazine, and more. Find out more about WI Prime by following the link.